Hello friends. So today's video is going to be a list of some reader pet peeves. So by that, I don't mean some pet peeves I have as a reader. I mean pet peeves I have at us collectively <laughs> as readers. I have done pet peeves videos in the past. There's the obvious things that we as readers get frustrated at. So, you know, Netflix stickers, when books don't align, things like that. This is going to be about specific things that we have a tendency to do sometimes. Gosh darn it, sometimes we can be very frustrating people. <laughs> and I wanted to go through and just sort of, in a very silly way, vent about some of the annoying things that we have a tendency toward. The first one of these, I have personally never done this, and I don't feel like most of you have done this, but I have seen it happen, and it was sort of the thing that made me want to film this video, because I was like, that is so ridiculous. Why would anybody get mad about this at this particular person? We don't like mid-series cover changes. I don't know a single person that's like, yes, I love the fact that it's gonna look different and it won't match the first one or it won't match the first two or three. I don't think anybody's ever saying that. However, it is not pretty much ever the author's decision. So what you shouldn't do is get mad at the author. I don't understand why anybody thinks that it's appropriate to go get mad at an author over a cover change anyway. I feel like you should gain some perspective about the things that you should be getting mad at. I get being mad at a surface level, like, oh, this is annoying kind of way. But to, to get mad enough that you're like, you know what? I know this author just announced this cover and they're excited to be sharing the cover for the next book, but I'm mad. So I'm gonna tell them that they suck. Like, I don't, why would you do that? That's, uh. anyway, so this did happen. I felt so bad. The author, Laura Sebastian, she wrote the book Castles in Their Bones that came out earlier this year. And when she revealed the cover for the next book, it is a variation of the first one. And again, completely outside of her control. I'm sure she probably, I think she really likes, she said she really likes this new cover and she likes the design. But what do you think, of, okay. If an author is frustrated at this, I get it. You're probably frustrated, they're probably frustrated, but what do you think they're gonna do? Badmouth their publisher and be like, I'm really upset at, and then tag their publisher for changing the cover. I like it, but like, I wish it would have stayed the same. No, they, they can't, you think they can do that? They can't do that. So all they can do is be excited about their cover. And it's not them that you should be frustrated at. I think it's totally fair and legitimate to be frustrated when they they don't put the care into the first cover because there are times the reason that they change the cover is they've decided, you know what? I don't think this cover is catching enough people's eye. So let's change the cover and then change the design for the series. And that will hopefully bring in more people. And I think they do that sometimes because they just sort of kind of put in whatever effort to the first book. I like how this is turning into a pet peeve at <laughs> not readers. And then at some point, maybe it does start to pick up steam and they're like, oh, all right, well, maybe we should do a rebrand and a refresh because that'll bring in more people. And I'm like, why don't you just put in the effort initially instead of causing everybody the headache of being like, I guess, I guess now I have to, if you're the author, announce this different cover and act like I don't notice that this cover is different and then have my readers be disappointed and then have some people get mad at me. So just all I'm saying is, I don't think most of you do it, but if you've ever gotten mad at the author, don't do that. It's not their fault. They can't help it. This next one, I don't think I'm bringing anything new to the table. I just felt like I had to say it. None of us like it when people rate and review books they haven't read. That's silly. Why would you do that? We've all seen it where you go to look up some information about when is this book coming out? this new release that you're looking forward to or the sequel to something you read. And then you see ratings and reviews that are 100% not because somebody got an arc. It's purely just because that person, they just hate that they, for whatever reason, they, they hate the book or they hate the series so much that they will forever and always rate the next things one star. And that just doesn't make sense to me. And I will say there are people that go through and they will, they will give five stars to something it's not just the negative, it's the people who are really big fans. Also, they'll give something five stars before it's even out. I have heard some people will do that if they'll put the rating they think it's gonna be and their prediction, and it's more of a personal way for them to keep track. This is what I think I'm gonna feel about this book, and then they'll rate it what they actually ended up feeling. I can I can understand that. That makes sense to me, and also Goodreads. It's not just for us collectively, but it is for the individual, and if so, if that helps you keep track, 
And if that's a fun little thing for you to do, to, to do these predictions, completely understand. What I don't get though is the people that are just like, five stars, I love this author and anything they'll put out. These next ones go hand in hand, so I'm gonna sort of have them be two parts to one point. And this has to do with buying special editions that you couldn't care less about so that you can sell them. I get that that's a thing. That's a thing all over. It's a thing for buying concert tickets. It's a thing for buying anything that's in high demand. I also understand it's it's a it's a thing. Books are things. And the story that is within the book does not need to be within a physical copy. You can read a book regardless of whether you get those fancy editions or not. But I also know that, you know, some people want to buy something special for someone they love or somebody has a really strong connection to a book. It means so much to them. It got them through a really hard time. They love, ha they just love books in general. They like having their library. That's the thing for them. Someone else is like, I don't care at all about this. I just know other people feel strongly about it and I'm gonna take advantage of that. And that just feels mean. <laughs> I know it's a little pure hearted of me to be like, don't do that. Some people, it means a lot to them though. I, I understand it's a little idealistic. The part two to this point has to do with when you sell it. I will either do a giveaway for it, or if I am going to sell it, I'll try to sell it for whatever I paid for it. Plus maybe shipping, you know, adding that in. But, oh my gosh, the amount that people will upsell books for is a lot. And I'm not sure who determines these prices. It's just us. Somebody at some point is like, I have this series that everybody wants, so, a thousand dollars and then someone else will be like i have that series too i it was okay but if people are gonna pay a thousand dollars then i'll sell it for a thousand dollars and then suddenly everybody apparently all agreed upon this really absurd price tag when you spent 200 on the series or whatever it may be again grand scheme of life it's not that important books are just things nobody needs these it's not the end of the world it just it just makes me a little sad when i see people upselling stuff for just such high prices. The last point for today has to do with how we treat other people for how they choose to organize their books in their home. I have seen people immediately decide if they see anything that is aesthetically pleasing to the person who owns the books and how they organize them. I, for example, like my books. I like trying out different things, but I do like when the books are even, I love it. And I do like when books that I think are gonna look nice next to other books, I'll try to put those together. But there are people that will immediately, if they see you've done anything that looks nice with your books, they automatically decide, well, you're not really a true reader. You're not truly a real fan of those books. You're not really, they just immediately think that you're, they're gatekeeping basically how big of a fan you can be depending on how you organize your books. And then on top of that, there will be people that think less of you and think that you're stupid or unintelligent, depending on how you organize your books. It will never make sense to me because it is, to me, you seem like you're not capable of thinking of, I mean, it seems like you're the one who maybe has uh, some, I'm, try I'm trying not to say stupid, but you, you come across a, a silly to me if you're like, that person is dumb for wanting the rainbow look or that person's dumb for why would you split your series apart it's just stupid really it's stupid to reach two feet to grab this one and then this one it's not it's fine it's no big deal and i just i can't imagine thinking less of someone's intelligence or just them as a person because of how they organize their books it's totally fine if you have your preferences if you're like i just don't get it i mean i i love when it's in alphabetical order or i some people will be like, I keep my books in a closet protected because I don't want any sun damage to come through the window and damage the books. And I don't want dust to collect because over there it's dusty. I will protect these books at all costs. There's some people that are just like, their books are out everywhere and they like their books on their nightstand. They like their books over here on a TBR shelf. And then they, they have like books all over their house. You have different ways of organizing your books. Whatever works for you, they're your books. They're your books. I don't understand being like, you're a stupid person because you like your books to look aesthetically pleasing. And I'll add, I also don't understand people who shame bookworms who don't, uh, who use their library. Some people would rather check the books out from the library, which by the way, does help authors, but 
some people will treat you like, oh, well, you're not helping the author. Maybe they spend their money to donate to things that help get books to other people. You don't know. So don't make assumptions about people depending on how they organize their books or whether or not they even have books to organize. It's silly. I'm sorry. I shouldn't have gotten so <laughs> worked up because at the end of the day, it is, it's all very silly and there's so many more important things to care about in the world, which is why I don't understand getting mad at these sorts of things. But at the same time, I feel like I'm being hypocritical because I'm getting mad at people who get mad over these things that are trivial and silly. And so, you know, hopefully it was at least entertaining and you got a good chuckle out of it. But anyway, that's it for some reader pet peeves. I hope you all have a lovely rest of your day. Thanks so much for watching and I'll see you later. Bye.